Hey everyone. So I had some really weird results when I was using this tool to test both the ILX 407 and that Grundig GX 3800. It was really weird. With the GX 3800, it was barely registering any type of voltage and I had to keep turning it on and off just to get any kind of reading. And we were getting like 1.2 volts with this tool. But when I actually measured it with my fluke meter, I was getting like 4.4 volts. But with the Alpine ILX 407, when I used this, it claimed I was only getting 3.2 volts from the head unit. So in order to avoid confusion, we're gonna test this against the fluke meter plus this fluke 123B scope. This is gonna actually show us at what point the head unit is really distorting. So although the SMDD1 Plus has that distortion detection, I don't know how accurate that is based on what I saw with the voltage test. It just, it wasn't accurate, which is such a disappointment. And I also never heard back from their warranty department. So let's actually put this thing on the bench and see what it's really doing. And we'll use all three tools to find out. All right, so the first one I think we should do is the distortion test and voltage test using this tool. So I've got uh, the 1000 uh, Hertz test tone playing through the radio and I'm gonna turn the volume up on here and we should get a reading and we're connected. It's, it's detecting distortion already. What volume at? We're at 20. Oh, you know what? I probably have media expander on because we were playing around with that. So let me go into the settings real quick and go to sound. Media expander off. All right, so media expander is off. And let's turn this back up. We've got some voltage, a little flash of distortion. We're at max volume on the head unit. We're at 35 on the head unit. And this guy's only reading three volts. Let's see what happens at what level it starts to distort once I turn that media expander on. I think it was at 16, because we're gonna test that with the scope over here too, in a minute. So let me go to sound, go to media expander, which should be called distortion expander <laughs> on level two. And right away, this is showing distortion. So let's find out at what volume this thing set to, the oh, you know what, I think that was it. 19. So this is detecting distortion at 19 with the media expander on using our test tone with 1000 hertz. Yep. Cool. All right, so let's see what kind of results we get using a fluke for voltage and then the scope for distortion. And we'll do that with and without the media expander. All right, so this is kind of sad. I do have the fluke hooked up to the front preamp output. We have our 1000 Hertz test tone playing through. We have the volume all the way up and we are only getting 3.27 volts, which means this was giving us a pretty accurate reading at 3.2. Let's check out the distortion test using the scope and see if it really distorts at volume 19 with media expander on two and if it's clean all the way up without that. So now I've got this hooked up to the subwoofer preamp output and I am seeing only about three volts and that's with the sub all the way up. But one thing I noticed is if I back out of this menu and then go back into subwoofer, that level has reset. I gotta check and see if there's a software update for that. All right, guys, so I actually, I updated the software and because um, I was having an issue where it wasn't retaining the subwoofer level controls. And to do this test on the preamp to check the voltage, I wanna have that subwoofer level all the way up. And the radio was not remembering that setting. So if you have this radio and you're wondering about that, that software update is available from Alpine so that it will retain the settings. So if I go into the stereo settings right here, I have under sound, subwoofer is on all the way up to 15 and I've got crossovers off, EQ is flat and I'm gonna show you what we get for voltage. I've got one of my clips connected to the subwoofer preamp output 
and I'm gonna put the other probe on and let's see what we get. I've got the volume all the way up and we're playing 40 Hertz through this. And all of a sudden we're not getting anything. There we are. So it is four volt. All the way up, subwoofer level, all the way up. We're getting four, 3.7, four-ish. Pretty close. I did see four on there. But with the thousand hertz test tone, we weren't getting that. I'm gonna try that again. And maybe that's why the SMDD1 was showing us three volts. So let's try that. I'm on the subwoofer pre-out. I'm gonna switch this up real quick. Another pre-out. And let's change our track. Same like a thousand hertz test tone frequency. Get this baby back up here. Volume is still all the way up. 4.13. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. 4.13. Nice. It is four volts. Good job, Alpine. Now let's play around with the distortion. Let's play around with the scope and see what's going on there. All right, let me move this over so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, guys, so I have the scope connected to the rear pre-out and we are playing our 1000 Hertz test tone and we have the volume all the way up and that signal looks clean. So we don't have any distortion all the way up. That's awesome. Let's see if there's any difference on the subwoofer channel pre-out. Let me switch this up real quick. All right, so I've got that switch to the subwoofer preamp output, 40 Hertz playing through, still looking super clean here. If I go into the audio settings and I turn on the media expander, let's see if that makes a difference. I'm gonna put that all the way up to level three. Still looks clean. That's fantastic. Level two, level one off cool let's see if we get the same type of results on the front or rear pre-out with the thousand hertz test tone and the media expander all right we're back in that front pre-out with our thousand hertz test tone and i'm going to put on the media expander and see if that affects that signal if it clips at all straight to level three no look at that Still nice and clean. So you might be wondering, what does distortion look like? So I'm going to disconnect this from the RCA and actually connect it to the speaker wire output so we can see at what point the head unit actually starts to send a distorted signal. Hang tight. All right, guys, that is what distortion looks like. Choppiness. No more sound waves. That is what kills your speakers. Now, granted, that is with the volume all the way up still and with the media expander on. So let me turn the media expander off and we're gonna see at what point the head unit actually begins clipping. So let's watch that signal. I'm gonna turn the volume down and we're gonna see once that signal actually smooths out. You can see it's starting to get smoother. There we go. So we're clean at 20 with media expander off. 21, it's... Uh, Starting to bottom out a little bit there. 22, we're totally distorted. And that's with media expander off, bass treble, everything's at flat. Now let me put it back to it's clean. Turn media expander on level one and see what happens. We have distortion. So just with media expander on level one, now we distort at a lower volume. 
Clean at 19. I just turned the volume down a notch. What about level two? Bottoming out. Go down a notch on the volume. 18 is clean. Level three. Looks clean still there. And what was our volume at? 18. So that's one of my main concerns that I just want to bring up to consumers out there is if you are using this radio and you're powering your speakers off the head unit, you really should not use this feature and turn the volume up. You really shouldn't go past volume 21 because you'll send a distorted signal to your speakers at 21. You should, really shouldn't go past 20, actually, is what I'm saying, because at 21, you have distortion with everything set flat. And going in and, and boosting things like the bass and the treble, that may affect it too, right? So if I bump up the bass, let's see if we're still clean here. Yeah, we're still clean here. So it's, it's really more of that media expander, which is kind of jacking everything up and trying to restore frequencies that are lost. But it definitely causes the built-in amplifier on this unit to store at a lower volume. So if you are going to use this head unit, just keep in mind that it's going to be clean at high volumes using the preamp only, using the amp filter from the radio. Don't go past 20 or you risk damaging your speakers. So what does all this mean? Why do I do these tests? I wanna know how this products work so that my customers can have the best experience. I don't wanna sell somebody a radio and you know, a month from when I sell and install a radio, they come back and they're like, man, you know, this radio blew up my speakers and maybe they're stock speakers. I wanna be able to show to them how this works and, and why it's important to have a separate amplifier to power your speakers if you like to play it loud and clear because the amplifiers that are built into these radios, they're limited. They're only gonna play so loud before the amp inside the radio actually starts to distort. And that is what damages your speakers. And you know, if you have um, maybe a head unit that doesn't have the cleanest preamp, the nice thing about this is even at the volume all the way up, that preamp level signal was clean. That's not the case in every radio. So I wanna know at what point I should tell my customer, okay, don't go past this point. If, if you go past this volume level, you're gonna to start to send those choppy waves to your speakers. And even if you have a nice aftermarket amplifier with a ton of power, going to nice aftermarket speakers that can handle all that power, if you're sending a signal that looks like that, that's choppy like that, you're gonna blow up your speakers. And not only blow up your speakers, you could blow up your crossovers. This is a Morel crossover that came from one of their hybrid 602s from a customer's car. Can you see that? It's blown up. It blew the cover off. I mean, it is totally blown. That is from distorted signal. So even with really good quality equipment, if you, you know, go into your head unit and you turn bass boost up, you turn features like media expander up, you jack up the bass, the treble, um, you take that nice smooth sound wave and it ends up getting choppy and it's that choppy signal that's going to damage your equipment so it's really important to know what the limits of our equipment are so that we don't go past that limit and damage the nice equipment that we've invested in right so uh, i was really happy to see that the preamp on this stayed clean all the way through i was happy to see that it is in fact four volts some head you manufacturers advertise one thing and it ends up being something else and then there's also confusion when you use a product like this, which is supposed to be a quick, easy way to actually test distortion and see it, what the voltage is. But as you can see from this test, this really wasn't accurate. And I'm kind of bummed because these people, the warranty department never got back to me. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing, but I don't recommend using it because this was showing distortion at 16. We saw with our Fluke 123B that um, we weren't getting any distortion through the preamp. So I'm surprised about that. And also this was saying that we were only getting three bolts when we were clearly getting, you know, four or very close to four. So that that's great about this Alpine ILX 407. Uh, the next product test I'm gonna do, which I'm really excited about, is gonna be with Kenwood between the DMX 7706S and the DMX 706S, which is Kenwood's regular product and then their Exelon product. Technically, the Exelon is supposed to have a higher voltage preamp, We'll see if that's really what it is or if it's really the same thing and it's just a marketing ploy, we'll find out. 
But thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoy this video and want to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe. And if you appreciated what this video was all about, please remember to hit that thumbs up. That really helps me out. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.